stay a little more focused in the brand. Okay. Get a journal and go study uh -huh. the top moto vloggers, the top related kind of motorcycle channels, the top people doing things. Look at their most viewed videos, study what's working for them and look at what ideas you can do. You gotta just press record. Awesome, man. Well, hey, thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, where are you streaming to us from? Uh, how are things going in your life right now and what do you do? I uh, appreciate it, Son. Um, so I'm doing fine. I, I hope you're doing fine. I am from Edmonton, Canada right now. Uh, <laughs> my daughter just popped up here. Anyway, um, so uh, basically, I have a YouTube channel called Trabby Dakal. Um, basically, I make videos. I'm kind of nervous right now, man. <laughs> no worries. No worries. <laughs> Talking to you. Um, so yeah, I make YouTube videos mostly regarding uh, motorcycle and travel. Um, I actually did a motorcycle ride uh, last summer from uh, here, Canada, to uh, down Tijuana, Mexico. I was actually going to meet with you guys in Vegas uh, during that. I think it was in July. You guys had a meetup, and I happened to be in Vegas, but somehow that meetup oh, got no, canceled. Like Vegas, Vegas influencers, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I did a, a cross-country trip across USA, but I'm all over the place um, in terms of videos, as you can see from my channel. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I'm kind of lost right now because, uh, you know, it. I got some equipment. I got some ideas how to edit videos. Um, I think I have a knowledge of bringing content out, but I'm kind of struggling to build the audience. What's uh what's your end goal? You have a day job right now? Yes. Yes, I do have a day job. I work as a, a telecommunication service technician, uh, mostly working for internet service provider. How long um, have you been doing YouTube? Um for the last two years. Uh you know, off and on. Initially I started uh you know interviewing some celebrities who visit from Nepal. Um, you know, I used to interview those, so that's why like you see the subscriber count on my channel is like over 20,000 because I used to interview celebrities and then every event that used to happen here, I used to capture the event and put it up on YouTube. Um, but I kind of started doing my own content, you know, that wasn't kind of sustainable. So all those videos are now private. Uh, everything that you see on my channel is everything that I have, you know, worked hard and done myself, you know, doesn't relate to other people. So, yeah. what, um, and what do you want to happen? You want this to be like a full-time thing eventually? Exactly. In the long run, I definitely want to make it a, a full-time thing and, you know, be able to grow and build the audience so that it's kind of, you know, Ooh, ice cream, man. <laughs> oh, it's, it's like dinner time here too. And so I saw you going to that restaurant and man, I am distracted. What kind of gear you shoot with? This looks cool. Yeah, I got a, a Canon 80D. I actually, like gears, I have plethora of gears, you know. Um, <laughs> I, I you bet, right? Can, you're, you're, you're into tech like I am, right? Yeah, like gadgets I keep on buying. That last ATM Mini Pro, I ordered, pre-ordered it. So, like, you know, anything that I see and I like and I think I can integrate into my production, I do buy it, you know. Um, but, yeah, in terms of gears, I, yeah, Canon 80D is my primary vlogging camera. I got GoPros. Uh, Insta360, I recently uh, did a video on it. Um, yeah, and that obviously is my baby right now, as you've seen. So your goal would be to be able to do YouTube full-time mm -hmm. uh, and be able to quit your job, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, and that's your question is, is, is what would you do as far as growing on YouTube and getting things going, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, um, all right. Well, a couple thoughts. Uh, first of all, and this is this is wide for everybody watching. This is wide for uh, just business in general. The number one reason businesses fail um, is because of a lack of market demand. Okay. So, like, I'll say that again. The number one reason businesses fail is because of a lack of market demand. So, what do I mean? We might ask ourselves, okay, how can I grew up in Seattle? And so I, I think about uh, actually an hour north of Seattle in a small town. And I remember uh, growing up with my dad downtown Seattle, we went to the first ever Starbucks. It was a little place. They didn't even sell coffee, they just, it was a roastery and they'd sell the beans. And then eventually there was the second uh, Starbucks in Pike Place Market. 
And uh, I remember when they started Starbucks and what was so crazy is now today, Starbucks is in Canada, it's international, it's everywhere. It's like the leading stock coffee brand. But when they started, it wasn't like there wasn't coffee. It was, there was coffee everywhere. McDonald's was selling coffee. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts was selling coffee. Pete's coffee was happening. Seattle's Best was happening. So I can't believe they'd have the audacity to um, start a coffee uh, shop, right? But nevertheless, mm -hmm. they did and they grew super crazy and um, and now they're taking over the world. Now, if we fast forward to today, did you know there's still coffee shops opening? This is Santo Coffee and oh. they, are, they opened up in Seattle and a friend of mine uh, is a part of this team and uh, they uh, obviously are shut down right now because of the lockdown. But in the midst of Starbucks, in the midst of like on every corner, there's a, a, a hipster coffee spot or whatever. And mm -hmm. in the fact that growing up in, in Marysville, Washington and in, in Arlington, there was espresso stands on every other corner. And some of them were like those bikini espresso stands, normal espresso stands. There's probably, there's espresso stands everywhere. So, so how could it be? Well, McDonald's sells coffee. How could anyone be else, else be in business? It's because there's demand for the content. Okay. Coffee. So when you think about the vision of your channel, um, you know, right now I kind of see you vlogging, you know, a little bit. I, of course I see the, the motorcycle stuff. And uh, there is a, a desire for a lot of us to maybe become, if you will, even the vibe I get is that there's kind of this like this desire to maybe kind of become a, you know, a, a, a social media influencer. I make travel videos, you know, even the word lifestyle videos and then moto vlogs. Mm -hmm. um, the question you have to ask and that we all need to ask ourselves is. Is there a market? Like, is there a viewership for this audience? It's reasonable to ask, or, or for this content, it's reasonable to ask how many other, here's a question, how many other moto vloggers are successful? Mm -hmm. Now, there's probably a lot, but like, how many have you researched your top five to 10 competitors? Have you? Uh, like competitors, there, there are really successful people. So generally, moto vlog is popular in Asia, like, you know, really popular okay. compared to North America and, and Europe, like in India and Nepal, it's like really popular. Every other good. people are doing motor vlogs nowadays. So that's the market. So that's good. Yeah. So the market is there. Um, but yeah, I'm still struggling. I'm trying to collaborate with, especially being on North America, you don't really have that many people to collaborate. Um, I'm trying to do some virtual collaboration with the people uh, back in India and Nepal. Um, but yeah, like I haven't really done uh, a super intensive research to see who are my competitors and you know what what uh, difference that I'm doing. I think I'm basically just going with the flow and doing things what I generally like. That's that's probably what's happening. I th I think. Yeah, and I think, and that's kind of the point I want to get to is you want to think about doing the things you generally like versus doing the things that there's a proven market and demand for. Now, eventually. When you focus on, I think, serving an actual target market, um, you still want to have fun, which you will because you love moto vlogging. You still mm -hmm. want to, but I would love to see more focus. I feel like the other opportunities, I don't know if this is part of the thing, but I think in terms of people searching the bikes, searching maybe how to modify the bikes, searching how to repair the bikes, searching how to do a different chip in the bikes, searching... Mm -hmm. That even as I look at the fact that you're doing like an iPhone 11 uh, unboxing, like to me, it's not actually, I mean, people are watching it, studying your competition because success leaves clues, thinking okay. about what types of titles and videos and topics do really well, but then also really doubling down because what I also learned, right, was that coffee sh shops sell coffee and mm -hmm. that they also might sell pastries but typically they all, you know, they don't, they're not dentists. You know what I mean? Like they're not also like, they're not going to do your taxes for you. Like they become really clear on what they, what they are. I think the moto vlogging thing is great. Mm -hmm. okay. You love it, right? I, oh yeah, I absolutely love it. And so like, can you also, do you work on the bikes? Do you repair the bikes? I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> do you modify them at all? Uh, no. I, okay. <laughs> I, I only love to ride. Uh, I mean, I've done some little mods, like, you know, adding uh, 
you know, like pegs and stuff. But yeah, have you ever, had, have you ever done videos about those types of things? Like, could you do videos about like accessories on stuff? Yeah, like if you notice, I write that one there, the pannier liners, and then there are some videos that says um, uh, accessories up there, unboxing tools and accessories for my BMW. You see, your bro, old, yeah. success leaves clues even on your own channel, bro. You, this one, this is one of your most viewed videos because it was so practical. Because other people are looking at the accessories and they're geeking out and they want to be into this stuff as well. Could you double okay. down on videos like this? I yes, I could. I could. Yeah, actually. yeah. So, so because I'm thinking this is this is search based. People want to see this BMW. This is interesting because uh, people want to see this electric bike. That people also have another bike. So, so anyways, I I think you're doing really well. I actually think that this channel. Um, has a lot of potential. I think the key is to maybe realize that for a time being, I'd be hesitant about, um, I want you to stay on brand. That's kind of the thing. Okay. Have a little bit more blinders on and you said it yourself. Sometimes I kind of just like do what I like. And then even lately. So here's my thing. If all of a sudden I'm going to Starbucks every day, this is what I just mm -hmm. saw with the newest videos. I'm going to Starbucks every day and I walk up to the counter and I go, hey, can I get a coffee? And they're like, no, actually um, we'll do Botox for you. And you're like, uh, but I want a coffee, but they're like, nah, man, we're doing Botox. Now. What, the, like, what the heck? And like in the last couple of videos, now this looks pretty okay. good because this is a movie about writing, right? Um, it's not really like a, a writing, but it is a, a movie that's made by uh, boys here in Canada and the US. It's a Nepali movie. They made, it's like a, a thriller. So it's like a sort of a ride, but not the actual motorcycle ride, you know? <laughs> All right, that might you know that might tie in. I don't know if the yeah. Insta three sixty does, but I think what would about the Insta three sixty is the fact that obviously you're doing it related. So it's almost, I mean, I I actually don't even want to be too overly critical at the level of videos you're at. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that you're also just on the journey. So final thoughts is is because I don't. I mean, I see about with the ones you made private. I see about you know. 50 or so videos that are out 50 or 60. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think that let's summarize, stay a little more focused in the brand, okay. get a journal and go study uh -huh. the top moto vloggers, the top related kind of motorcycle channels, the top people doing things, look at their most viewed videos, study what's working for them and look at what ideas you can do. Um, okay. double down on really getting clear on the promise to your audience, who the channel's for and what's it going to deliver. And there's all kinds of people that want to watch this. And so like being clear that it's like, if you come into Starbucks, they're like, look, you can get, you know, pastries and snacks, you can get coffee or you can get, you know, smoothies or tea. But that's it. You can't get shrimp. You know what I mean? <laughs> like at some point okay. you can't get tofu and curry. Like it, they, like, so just like focused and, and, and then be thinking about the tribe that you're building. The cool thing is you love doing this. You mm -hmm. know it's big, especially international. Eventually, you're going to be able to get over international and collab in person with people. But mm -hmm. if you just keep posting and I think get clear on uh, your content, you're really actually going to do great. And you've got a couple of videos. And then the final one is make a list of super practical videos you could do about accessories for a specific thing, about specific pegs, about... Mm -hmm. Um, how to film, like best tips for filming moto vlogs. That's where you could get in. I what's what I would rather see with this is is like Insta 360 X mounting technique for filming a moto vlog. Because then everyone that's into moto moto vlogs is like, oh, sick! Like he's teaching me in the context of the promise of this channel about these tools. So as providing a value, providing value, you know, to the audience so that they kind of see potential, you know, providing value. Okay. Oh, man, did you get okay. value out of this call today? Oh man, definitely did. Total. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, I appreciate you. Uh, I hope things are going good up there in Canada. And you're still employed, right? You still got your. You're still doing. Telecom, yeah. and telecom is considered as a essential service. So I do have to go out and fix internet troubles. So right now, like, you know, a lot of businesses are closed. I generally work for businesses only, but uh, lots of people are working from home. So 
they're working using VPN. So the bandwidth requirement for the company has gone up. So I we're bet. putting in like 10 gig circuits and gig circuits and fiber optics and all kind of stuff. So it's still keeping us busy, um, you know, eight to four, Monday to Friday. It's, it's, it's still going. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you. Thanks so much for coming on. 